The Flieger started out as a simple tool for German pilots in World War II, but has evolved into one of the most historic and recognized watch designs. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we are going to take a look at what is one of the best budget Fliegers I've ever seen, with the Escapement Time Automatic Type B Flieger. For around $100, you get a Sapphire Crystal, Seiko NH35A Movement, Good Loom, and a beautiful glossy dial complete with a set of blued hands, which is something you see in higher-end Fliegers, but not typically in this price range. Now, Escapement Time is a rather small brand on AliExpress. It was a brand a lot of you recommended I take a look at, and after I did, I wound up buying two watches, the first of which was the Quartz Chronograph that I already reviewed. Now, before I really jump into this, I want to give a quick shout out to Honest Watch Reviews. I believe he was the first channel to take a look at Escapement Time, and his review is one of the reasons I decided to pick up one for myself. So, after you're done here, go over there and check out his take. Now, traditionally, Fliegers are pretty massive, but these days they come in a variety of sizes. So, for Escapement Time, they decided to keep it in the mid-range at about 42mm without the crown, and around 46.2 width. Although, if you are looking for something a little bit smaller, then go check out the Flieger by Steel Dive or Addies. They're both about the same price and great budget Fliegers, but I think they're missing some of the nicer touches you have here. Now, lug to lug on the escapement time is 50.3, which is a little bit longer than I like. For my 7 inch wrist, I think around 46 to 48 is ideal. So, there is a little bit of an overhang, but I think it's manageable. However, one thing that really surprised me is a total thickness of 12.4. On its own, 12.4 isn't that impressive, but here that's 12.4 with both a screw down crown and 300 meters of water resistance. So this is one tough little bugger, and it feels that way too. At 90 grams on its leather strap, it's not overly heavy, but it does have a nice solid feel to it. The case design here is rather simple, but that's okay for two reasons. The first is that for 100 bucks, you can't expect a whole lot, but more importantly, that's in line with what a Flieger is supposed to be, as it's really just a simple, straightforward tool watch, and that's exactly what you have here. Although the execution itself is pretty good for the price, there's a nice linear brushing on the side, as well as a circular brushing on the top and the clean bezel. And as a whole, everything is nice and smooth, with the exception of the bottom of the lugs, which have a little bit of an edge to them. You can also see that it has a simple but nicely done custom case back with a plane on it, which might be a nod to some of IWC's Fliegers. I think an exhibition case back might have worked a little bit better here, but they added a beefier case back just to help out with that added water resistance. For the most part, the case is pretty well done, but there is one part that I don't quite like. If you look at the left side, visually it looks really tall. It's like a straight wall going up from the case back all the way to the bezel. Now, 12.4mm isn't that tall, but the case design isn't helping that in any way here. But again, that is keeping with what the design is supposed to be. Now, moving back to the front, we have a flat sapphire crystal covering the dial, and as far as I know, there is no AR coating here. As well as at the right, you have a nice onion-shaped screwed-in crown, which is one of my favorite elements of the design. It's a nice size, easy to use, and adds just the right amount of vintage aesthetic. However, as nice as the case is, it's the dial in the handset that really set this watch apart from others in its price range. The dial itself is this deep, dark, glossy black, with a rather thick application of luminous paint. There's also a surprising amount of depth here when you combine the indices with a slight reflectiveness of the dial, as it seems like those indices in the chapter ring just seem to be floating on a sea of darkness. Now, if you're not familiar with Fliegers, there are two basic designs. The first is the Type A, which is a much cleaner design and puts much more emphasis on the hour indicators. Then there's a Type B like what we have here, which puts much more emphasis on the minutes and adds a smaller inner ring for tracking the hours. The Type B is a bit more crowded, but I think it's also a bit more visually interesting. Now, Escapement Time carries both of those types of designs, and each one has a slightly different handset as well, but they both appear to have the same impressive heat-treated blue coloring. Depending on the lighting conditions, that blue coloring isn't always obvious against that black backdrop. But when you do catch it, it is fantastic, and especially the counterweight on the second hand. I think these macro shots here really speak for themselves about how well this is made. Now, that's about it when it comes to the dial. Overall, this is very much a classic Type B Flieger, and I think it's one that's rather well done. 
If there's one thing that I think people may have an issue with here, it's the rather short hour hand. But it is keeping with the design, and I think it's actually the perfect length, as it goes right to the edge of the inner hour track. In fact, I think all the hands are about the perfect length, with the minute hand going to the tip of the chapter ring markers, and the stick second hand writing that outer ring. So overall, really well done. But if for some reason you can't get over that short hour hand, then just take a look at the Type A fliegers that are out there. Now, the loom on the chronograph version was actually a little disappointing, but I think the automatic makes up for that. When the lights go out, everything here lights up brilliantly with the blue BGW-9 Super Luminova. And with regard to longevity, it's also pretty good. The dial fades out a little bit earlier than I would like, but the hands here are in it for the long haul, keeping up and even surpassing a Seiko Turtle. So considering the type of watch this is, I think overall it's pretty good. Now, there is a more expensive version of this with an Eta movement, but the one I have has a Seiko NH35A, which is really the primary workhorse for the affordable watch. So very appropriate and pretty much the perfect movement at this price. However, one thing to note is that the Seiko NH35A typically has a date function. So when you combine that with a non-date dial like we have here, you get what a lot of people refer to as a ghost date. As that movement is still there, it's just covered up. Now, what's interesting here is that you still have the first position of the crown where you would normally change the date. But when turning it there or even advancing the time past midnight, I've never felt or heard the date wheel advance. So not entirely sure what's going on here, but I did remove the case back just to verify that it is an NH35A. So I guess my best guess is that they removed the date wheel just to kind of simplify things. The strap escapement time uses here is the exact same one as the chronograph. And as a whole, it's okay. I've seen better and I've definitely seen worse. But when you consider that everything you're getting here and the price you're getting at, it's actually a pretty good strap for the price. It's a brown leather pilot style strap with white stitching, as well as an orange backing. The orange backing is a little bit odd, but that might be another nod to IWC. The leather itself has a decent feel to it, as well as a nice real leather smell. It breaks in fairly easily, and after that, it's fairly comfortable on the wrist. It's not too heavy, has a great presence, and overall feels nicely balanced. With my 7-inch wrist, there is a little bit of that overhang I already mentioned, but I think it's manageable and overall fairly comfortable throughout the day. So I think this is definitely a strap you could keep on at long term, but I'd probably change it out just to give it a different look. So in terms of value, I think this one is pretty high. The overall finishing, the dial, the loom, and the blued hands really put this as one of the best $100 watches I've ever seen, let alone throw in that crazy 300 meters of water resistance. However, to always make an informed decision, you should always look at some comparable watches. And for that, I'd recommend taking a look at the 40mm Flieger from Steel Dive. It's about the same price, but doesn't quite have all the nicer touches. There's also the Orient Flight for around 150 to 200 bucks. Hard to go wrong with an Orient, but this is going to come with Mineral Crystal. It's also pretty hard to go wrong with San Martin. They have a number of Fliegers, but it's been a while since I took a look at one. Although at the time, I was pretty impressed with what I saw. As a whole, I'd say the quality is probably on par with what Escapement Time has here, but I think the loom might be slightly better on a San Martin. Now, San Martins start at around 150 and then go up depending on the case and the movements you're looking at. Now, for my money, Escapement Time is what I would go with. It's one of the best bang for your bucks I've seen in a long time. So, if you are looking for a Flieger or you're just curious, my recommendation would be to go with the Escapement Time, assuming you're okay with the 42mm width. If not, then your best bet is going to be San Martin or Steel Dive. For me, I'm probably going to sell that chronograph version, but this is one I'm definitely going to keep around for a while, as eventually I do want to get a German Flieger, and when I do, I want to directly compare that to this one. But in the meantime, let me know what you think about the Escapement Time Automatic Flieger, and at this point, I think a lot of you already have them, so I'd love to hear your experiences. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me, until next time.